Hey, good morning. Are we live? You are, Mr. Speaker. Okay, good morning and uh, morning members of council and good morning members of the public. Uh, first order is to call uh, call the roll. So who is gonna do that this morning? Is that Ms. Cameron? Thank you. Senator Anselmi Dalton. Here. Senator Dockstadter. Here. Senator Driscoll. Here. Senator Grew. Here. Senator Landon. Here. Senator Rothfuss. Here. Representative Barlow. Here. Representative Connolly. Here. Representative Freeman. Here. Representative Greer. Here. Representative Summers. Here. Vice Chairman Perkins. Present. Hey, good morning, Mr. President. Chairman Harshman. Uh, here. Okay, morning, very Mr. Good. President. Very good, Mr. President. It's great to have you with us. Uh, just getting ready to say excused, and uh, great to have you with us. So, well, thank you. I'll I'll stay on for as long as I can. Okay. Very good. Well, this is going to be a short meeting, and uh, so. Uh, first order of business to uh, entertain a motion on approval of the minutes of our previous meeting. So Looks like so Representative Summers seconded by Senator Landon. Any discussion changes? Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand in front of your camera there. Okay, those opposed? Okay, that is the uh, minutes have been approved from our previous meeting, unanimous vote. Okay. Perkins votes aye. Okay, thank you. And uh, and uh, really, I think just to give a little background, I think, and, and first of all, I just uh, appreciate the public has weighed in heavily on this issue. I think uh, we've received uh, 44 comments as of last night, maybe a few more. Uh, read every one of those, appreciate that. And, uh, and as we all know, they were much in the same vein of thought, right? And much uh, perhaps like we're thinking as well, that uh, obviously safety comes first uh, of our staff and the public and those who participate in the process and then of course the members as well and their families. So uh, appreciate the public taking the time to actually type those comments down and weigh in on this issue. I would just give a little background members of council and to the public really normally what this would be would be a routine meeting and we would be discussing whether to have a you know like representative greer and i have advocated for the 30 30 to split our 60 days or whether it's going to be 40 20 or somewhere in the middle generally we've come out with a 32 to 37 day schedule try to bank a couple days in case we need them later and uh that would normally be the thing and it's not a big deal and it and it's where this legislature, the 65th, sets the schedule for the first session for the 66th. Well, as you know, uh, nothing is quite like it used to be. And so uh, we, I think, uh, you know, obviously the challenges facing us, it's hard for the 65th to go ahead and say yes on January 12th or yes on March 12th or yes on May 12th, we are gonna meet. There's just simply so much that's moving and changing. And so really the issues that that have to be uh, taken up are gonna be a couple of things in our constitution. Uh, first of all, the term of the 66 will begin, I believe is it that, uh, is it the first Monday of the new year? And I think that's January 4th this year. And then, so that term will officially begin. So we could start swearing members in members have to be sworn in in the chamber that they are elected to so you cannot do a virtual signing in our constitution specifically uh, says that the other part is that the constitution says the legislature will gavel in on the second tuesday and that this year is january 12th and uh, so we have to be sworn in uh, in the chamber and we have to gavel in on the 12th the other thing we have to do really is to have a message by our governor. And uh, so I would just say to folks, I've gotten a lot of comments and people have contacted me personally about these three ideas that were, 
were published on the website that are in today's meeting materials of, of uh, different length schedules and all those kind of things. I would just tell folks that we will not adopt any of those today. Those are just simply ideas to throw out. And I think uh, as we move forward and, uh, and have this discussion and have public comment, we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna swear people in what kind of early session to do these things to receive the address and those kind of things and perhaps if there's a few bills and then we're going to do what really no legislature has done recently is we're going to move this decision then to the leadership of the 66th and really i think with so much changing and so much going on i think that whether it's may or june or april or march or february i think it's going to become clear as operation warp speed and the vaccine and those kind of things uh so again i think the other piece of this you know for most of our history we only met every other year anyway and we've done the heaviest lift of our branch of government is to appropriate money and we've passed a two-year budget and uh and the governor of course times have changed and he's making reductions as he's constitutionally required and we can certainly weigh in on that so members with those opening comments uh i would like to move if you would go to your meeting materials and members of the public it's that uh, memorandum uh, from Director Ulbrich. Uh, it's dated, the one I have is dated November 19th. And uh, that's the most recent memo. And I'd ask the director to take us through this. And then we're going to open it up to discussion and public comment after that. So, Director Ulbrich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. Matt Ulbrich with LSO. Um, you know, I, I took the sort of in these unprecedented times, the unprecedented uh, decision to, uh, to write this memo on what your options might be um, in preparing for the, the start of the 66 legislature during a COVID-19 pandemic event. Um, I don't think I need to tell any of you that um, the disease is absolutely rampant in the state of Wyoming right now. Um, we had 1,260 uh, confirmed or, and, and uh, potential cases yesterday, which set a new record. Um, we haven't seen any sort of leveling off in our cases uh, over the past month to six weeks. Uh, you all know what a general session of the Wyoming legislature typically looks like. We pack a lot of people into a very small space. Uh, the ability to, to distance is non-existent. Uh, the ability to stay within a distinct cohort is non-existent to be able to conduct the average session. So when we were looking at, at how we would try to do this, how would we try to hold a general session given uh, the spread of an airborne virus that can be deadly and if not deadly, does have the uh, potential to also be devastating um, health consequences in other ways and easily spread through the air. Um, it, it just became apparent to me fairly early on that there was no way we could hold a typical uh, session in January without with the virus rates that we see right now. And so what, what we looked at uh, was could we delay the session? And the answer to that is yes, almost all of it could be delayed till a later date. Um, the big catch is since we're starting a new legislature, you absolutely do need to come get sworn in and you have to do it. Uh, at least I think the best reading of the constitution is you have to do it within the chamber to which you were elected. Um, but we can space that out. We can space it out over that first week of January. Uh, 75 members need to be sworn in. We can bring in uh, 10 to 15 members a day. If there's a desire to have all new members, newly elected members sworn in on the same day so they can form that bond um, and it could be the first day of session on January 12th, we could do that. There are a few other things that need to be done during uh, the January 12th date. 
including election of your leadership, um, adoption of rules. Uh, you would probably want to introduce some bills and assign those to standing committees to work during what I'm terming the, the first interim um, between the break in January and the uh, next time we convene. Uh, management council, the new management council, the management council of the 66 would also probably like to meet shortly after that to assign interim topics to work during this first interim. So, Mr. Chairman, what we really need today, though, from, from this management council in this meeting is a decision on a few things. And that's first, we've got JAC budget hearings scheduled to begin the first week in December. Do you want to hold those budget hearings? And what should those budget hearings look like? That's a decision point we need today. We also need to know generally what the January session should look like. Um, will it be a typical session? Will it be um, an incredibly abbreviated session? This is important for LSO planning. It's important for uh, members to be able to know what their year will look like. It's extremely important for our chief clerks so that they know who to hire for session staff. Um, and it's important for the public so they know how to plan their year accordingly as well. Um, those who have business with the legislature. Um, Mr. Chairman, but after that, I don't really believe, as you alluded to, that we need to make today any firm, hard decision on when that next session will be, begin. You know, it, it really depends a, a lot on the state of our economy, the state of a vaccine availability, um, and when we could hold a session. It also really depends on what uh, members availability is and and I think as I alluded to in the memo and maybe I, I uh, should have led with this more um, we've got a lot of flexibility after that January 12th date on what we do um, we could come in in May uh, for a quick session quick session six days to, to pass a budget and then come back in later in the year uh, when numbers are even lower, uh, infection rates are even lower and have a longer session. And then what you could also do is you could carry over those days you don't use this year and meet for up to 40 days in um, a regular session during 2022. And then you can call yourself into a special session for up to 20 days as well. So there's a lot of flexibility available to the legislature, uh, mainly because of our biennial budget process to be honest with you, and because of the authority uh, the governor has through statute to make these necessary budget reductions, which he's already made, and which frankly you've made, um, and the judicial branch has made as well. So Mr. Chairman, um, that's really why we're here today, decide on these budget hearings and uh, decide what council wants the January session to look like so we can begin to plan for Okay, very good. Why don't you just roll through this uh, memo kind of page by page. Members of the public can pull it up on our website and uh, go ahead, please. Uh, will do, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, on, on page one of the memo, um, I really talk about the current state of the virus in Wyoming, that even if we're able to flatten the curve some, I don't have confidence that the virus would abate to such a level by January 12th that we could actually uh, hold the session in any sort of normal way by January 12th. In fact, it's much more likely now, Mr. Chairman, that I think we double our infection numbers between now and January 12th, given the current rate of, of spread within the state. Um, I, I also talk about uh, what, what the session normally looks like, 40 legislative working days. We've got 600 people that pass through the building at least. And that includes, um, you know, all sorts of people, members, staff, lobbyists, executive and judicial branch, local government officials, um, our support services, 
um, highway patrol, uh, division out, and you know, we usually have a large group of school children come down and members of the public, and, and we go all throughout the building. You absolutely have to, you really can't just stay on the house side or the Senate side, because bills have to pass both houses, obviously, and it takes collaboration. And, and also what it really takes is coming together and being able to work on a bill that's introduced and get all 90 uh, members to put their best effort towards it to make that piece of legislation in as best shape it can to pass both bodies and then have the governor sign it. And, and I can't see a way to really do that effectively with the number of bills that we usually have in a general session, about 500, to be able to do something like that in a virtual session on, on Zoom. Um, Zoom, don't get me wrong, it's been a godsend for us. We have been able to conduct our interim business um, and even a special, a short, short special session uh, via Zoom. But I don't want us to be a victim of our own success and over rely on Zoom during a general session because I just don't think that what we could handle the volume of bills and committee meetings necessary for a general session completely via Zoom. And actually what I really believe is it would be better over Zoom though than trying to do it in some sort of hybrid format where we're in person, some of us, and other ones are over Zoom. And it might have to come to that in May and we'll cross that bridge when we do. But, um, but both of those would be extremely challenging in almost every aspect of the legislature that I could see. Um, the other thing I point out in this page is uh, the age of, of our membership. Um, I'm actually wrong there. We don't have 45 members who are over age 60. Um, I miscounted, we have 46, 46 of the 90. So over half of the members are over 60 and 13 of those members are, are over the age of 70. And uh, the other thing we all know too is we rely heavily on uh, retirees within the Cheyenne area to staff, to be our session staff. Um, and, and it's really, um, they see it as their civic duty to come help during the session and they've absolutely been critical to this process all the way along and they will continue to be so but that retiree age then that then puts them within a vulnerable category just like um the majority of our membership in the legislature mr chairman if we move on to page two um i think i would just say at this point in time that i fully understand why uh, our legislative sessions were set to be held in the winter. Um, and that was to uh, facilitate our, uh, you know, mainly at that time agrarian economy and uh, to get allow ranch and farm work to be done, uh, meet in the session and then get done before calving and uh, planning started. And I understand even today in 2020 with uh, a vast majority of our membership uh, it, whether they're involved in agriculture or whether they're involved in other things, we've all set up our year to be based around that January, February timeline to hold the session, be committed to this. And so it's going to be highly disruptive to hold the session any other time of the year. And I have completely factored that in. I've taken that into consideration. I understand it. And that's why I just, we don't make these suggestions lightly. Mr. Chairman, that if there was any way I thought we could hold a successful session in January, uh, I would be all for it, believe me. Um, we, I also talked about on that page two, what would be the delay, benefits of the delay of delaying the session. Um, number one, and this every day becomes more likely, uh, that we will have an effective vaccine against COVID-19 that's widely available uh, sometime in the by the second quarter of 21. Um, I, I think the number right now, and it could increase every day, is 30 million doses of the vaccine available in the United States by the end of 2020. Um, and, and they're proving to be at least early highly effective. And I 
think we would be foolish if we didn't give ourselves the opportunity to be vaccinated before we met in large numbers again. Um, there's a hope that uh, with better weather, uh, the number of cases and, and with the vaccine, the virus uh, may be reduced within the state. I think this is a big one too. We haven't really hit the full uh, flu season yet, but we'll be uh, dealing with dual public health um, issues and with conflating symptoms. Um, right now, anytime anyone at LSO has a cough or a headache or any symptoms that might be COVID related, um, they telework and they take a test and they don't come back to the office until they receive a negative result. If we all get sick, like we usually do with the flu during the session, you know, it would sideline even more of us than COVID. Um, I do think we'll have even better testing and screening and other preventive measures uh, as we move into 21. Um, and, and I think that this is an issue that is really important is if we come together and meet, um, it's highly likely that COVID will, will become uh, prevalent within the legislature and we'll have to stop and we'll have to hold off and, and then come back in and we'll probably have to do it multiple times. Um, and I think that if we wait for the majority of this session, we will allow the public to be more fully and safely engaged and they can do so safely without the fear of becoming infected with COVID-19 and bringing it home to their family. Mr. Chairman, on to page three, um, we've talked about the legal requirements for uh, convening the 66 on January 12th. Um, also the requirements that you be sworn in um, and then the requirement of article four, section four for the governor to address the new legislature. Um, we've gone over what the legislature absolutely needs to accomplish uh, that January 12th date, elect house and Senate leadership, adopt rules, receive the address from governor Gordon, consider bills if any, which may need to be adopted prior to uh, a later session date introduce and assign committee bills to joint standing committees to work during this first interim. And um, this probably won't happen, but uh, if the governor would have uh, a list of appointees to boards and commissions, um, the Senate president could assign those to Senate committees to consider during this interim as well. And if, they, if the governor doesn't have that list, we can wait until then to do that. On to page four. Um, uh, quickly go over some bills that you might want to consider in January. If Congress was to act to extend Carriers Act, which doesn't look like that's going to happen before January 12th, could do that. Um, I think that possibly the executive branch may need um, some access to some cash. Uh, right now, that's an open question. I don't know if that's absolutely necessary now. And then, Mr. Chairman, this is really a policy call, but um, could decide to uh, leave some severance tax available for spending, or you, you might just hold off on May to make that decision too. It's, it's really a negligible amount of money in the grand scheme of our budget. Um, I've talked already about what you could do between January and when session was to gavel in. Um, the standing committees to, could meet jointly to consider uh, amendments to introduce committee bills. Um, those bills then potentially could be handled in either through a mirror bill process or uh, be assigned directly to committee of the whole, or they could just be handled normally in a later session, but with much less need for a committee comment or uh, for a committee to work them. We could also actually start our uh, 2022 uh, budget session preparation with our interim committees and start uh, studying topics and developing legislation for that. The big one is uh, we've got redistricting this year and uh, need to decide that and get a bill ready by the start of the 22 budget session. Um, last page, Mr. Chairman, I included uh, three potential uh, session calendars for later in 21, um, 
uh, a 22 day, 27 and 32 day session. But really that was just to give uh, council and members an idea of what a later session could look like. Um, as I've mentioned, and as I want you all, and I know you are, all are thinking about, there's a lot of other options to be considered there as well, Mr. Chairman, but at least give us something to think about and a place to start from. Okay, very good. And really just a quick question, kind of on that last page you referred to it, but uh, there is kind of a deadline on, now, if we want to make changes to any of the governor's reductions or changes to the uh, to the budget, the two-year budget, through a supplemental budget, there's kind of a deadline in there in May that it needs to be accomplished so we can get it into the state's accounting system, the Wolf system, by the beginning of the new fiscal year, July 1. And that date is kind of the first week of May. Is that my understanding? Mr. Chairman, that's right. Um, to To give the state auditor's office and executive branch agencies enough time um, to build in those changes within our state accounting system, we should probably have a bill in final form by the third week of May. And that would give them roughly uh, five to six weeks to be able to get that implemented uh, before the end of the fiscal year. And generally that, you know, a, a week of, of budget amendments, another week of, uh, of conference committee, and then a vote, and then uh, those three days, almost four days for to override Governor's veto. Okay, very good. I'd like to open this up now, and I know we have uh, several legislators that have signed up for public comment, several, several of our colleagues. I think they're out there. So whoever's uh, administering the meeting, I think go ahead and let those folks who are ready to do public comment, we'd like to hear public comment from, from our members as well as uh, 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 folks in Wyoming. And so I see Senator Bebout. Uh, would you like to comment on any of this? We'd sure like to hear your, uh, any of your thoughts on any of this. From, from our members as well as uh, 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 folks in Wyoming. And so I see Senator Bebout. Uh, would you like to comment on any of this? We'd sure like to hear your uh, any of your thoughts on any of this. Yeah, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Can you hear me all right? Uh, Senator, I think you're going to have to turn your YouTube off. And then, so I see Senator Bebout. Uh, would you like? To Okay. How's this, uh, Mr. Chairman? Can you hear me now? Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Senator Bebout, Eli Bebout from Riverton, current Appropriations Committee Chairman. And uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for allowing me the opportunity to share a few words with you. And good morning to the rest of the members of Management Council. And I, like a lot of you, have had trouble sleeping nights thinking about the issues facing the state of Wyoming and and it goes one step further, of course, our, our government in Washington, but more closer to home to our state. And uh, as I've been thinking about this, I thought I would just share a few thoughts with you, and I appreciate that opportunity to do that. And specifically speaking from uh, the chairman of the Joint Appropriations Committee, and and as I look at it, Mr. Chairman, I, I would say this would be, to me, ideally the best scenario for us to move forward and of course, we all understand and recognize the structural deficit we've had. It's, it, we're in our fourth year now, and, and I still don't think the, the people of Wyoming understand the, the breadth and seriousness of this situation we find ourselves in. You know, not only with the oil, the decline of the price, but also the COVID impact is so unsettling. But ideally, if we were to meet in December and work the supplemental budget bill, and Mr. Chairman, you and I have chaired the JAC before, and I'm sure that when we get into that budget, looking at the governor's reductions, there'll be some fine tuning we do as far as the JAC would be concerned as relative to other people providing comments to us and work that budget, do the round robin and have a budget prepared to, to submit to the, the full legislature in the next general session. 
ideally it would be great to have that happen in January. Uh, listening to what Matt said about the COVID situation, I'm not sure that's going to happen. And so the question is then, do we still meet in, Jan in December and provide a, a budget for you to review, knowing that it may not be until May when you actually look at it, or do you meet it later in January or February? I guess my take would be, uh, and I'll do whatever you all want to do, Mr. Chairman, as far as management council, but if we did in fact do that work and we get Craig in January, then we could fine tune that as we move forward with the new joint appropriations committee. And the good news about dealing in December is the new members coming in will have an opportunity to actually go through the supplemental budget with those of us that are there. I know Representative Summers is on that as well as uh, others that that uh, will be leaving, uh, that, that won't be there in the next uh, the next general session for the JC. So when you look at that overall picture, probably a decent idea to have the uh, the appropriations committee meet in December, work the work the budget, do the supplemental, do the round robin, and present to you a, a budget that we think takes care of the needs of the state of Wyoming and, and is balanced to the best that we can do. Uh, the thing that I have really good concerns about, Mr. Chairman, and we can do that if that's your desire. We can meet in December, move a, move that supplemental budget forward. But when you look at the the deficit, and I looked this morning, you know we. Our general fund is in pretty good shape. Uh, I think maybe 100 million. If you put 100 million back into the into the reserve account, maybe 200 million shortfall. K through 12 was a big one, and you know we've been kicking the can for a long time. And I don't think any of us really believe that we can cut our way into taking care of these deficits. And we need to have a meaningful discussion about revenues. I've been saying that for three or four years. When you and I, you were speaker and I was president, we talked about it then. It's just a tough thing to do. I'm not sure what you want to do next general session, but from my perspective, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I really think you need to have a, an overall robust discussion about revenues as well as making responsible reductions to not only the general fund, which the governor's done, but also to K through 12. And I certainly think there's some, some reductions that we could be done there, but you still don't go to the point of solving all those, the huge deficits that we have in K through 12. As far as the JC meeting, whether we Zoom or whether we meet in person, uh, once again, do whatever you want, Mr. Chairman, as far as management council, but I would prefer uh, some, some latitude there to allow our members if they wanted to, to attend, they could. Uh, if they wanted to do virtual, they could. And of course, with our staff, work with them, accommodate them so they feel comfortable. Uh, it's a lot of hard work ahead of us. I sure would like to get the 66th budget or 66 session off to a good start by presenting to you a, a well thought out hard work budget that satisfies the needs of our state. And with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman Bebout. And uh, I always call you Speaker Bebout and President Bebout and uh, appreciate your years of service. And uh, you've given a lot uh, to the state of Wyoming, really appreciate lifetime of service. And uh, I would, any questions for Chairman Bebout by members of the council? Okay, and uh, Senator Dockstetter. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. And, and Senator Bebout, as we leave your discussion, then you are open to uh, a virtual and an in-person because of maybe the issue with the round robin. Could we just have you recap that real quick? Go ahead, Senator. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, soon to be President Doc Stater. Yeah, uh, we could do either way. I would like to allow the, <clears throat> the members of the JC if they wanted to be in Cheyenne in person to do that. The round robin is a difficult one to do virtually, but uh, we could accommodate. I know I see Representative Nicholas on there, my co-chair. Maybe he has some thoughts about that as well, but we could do whatever you want in person would certainly be better uh, with the, you know, respecting all the distances we need and all the measures because of COVID. And it'll be a little, uh, it'll be kind of tough for us all to get there for that only, but we could sure do that. And that probably would be the best way to come up with a meaningful budget. Okay, thank you. And, and Chairman Bebout, appreciate your comments again. And I think, uh, thank goodness we've saved some money. You know, it's, uh, and I think, you know, as you know, oil and gas has gone up and down in our state and continue, but I think this 
this destruction of coal is really something that, uh, you know, just a few years ago, we mined 470 million tons, and I think we're going to be under 200, around 170 million tons. You know, that's a half a billion dollars a year to our state budget. And uh, the destruction of coal, I think, has happened so fast, uh, faster than we were ever told and those kind of things, and let alone the, you know, the harm it's done to Campbell County and the workers and the families uh, who paid for the state for the last 30, 40 years, frankly. Uh, it's really uh, unprecedented and really harmful. But uh, Mr. Chairman. I, yeah, go ahead, Senator. You know, on that note alone, <clears throat> one of the things and a mistake I think a lot of us made, and I certainly was right at the top of that list, I didn't really believe that the, uh, the Obama administration would be able to do with the coal what they did. I, I just thought that you know, rationale would prevail. We continue to continue to produce our coal at reasonable levels. Boy, did I miss the boat and all of us did. And I just would urge caution to the legislature about oil and gas. You know, we talk about fossil free, uh, who knows what could happen with the new administration in Washington. So once again, to rely on oil or gas to bail us out would be shortcoming for the state. Just don't think it's gonna happen. Well, and that's, you're, you're so right. And I think that you know, I think currently half of our oil production is on federal lands. And uh, of course, federal government owns two thirds of the mineral rights in our state. So it's a it's a huge issue for Wyoming. And uh, well, I appreciate your leadership. And I think uh, Representative Conley has a question for you, Senator Bebow. Hey, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and thank you, Chairman Bebow. Um, Admittedly, my ears pricked up with hearing you mention that we really need to address revenue. And that's occasionally something that the Appropriations Committee has done. And I am curious if kind of with the upcoming supplemental budget hearings, you put together Section 300, you put together JAC bills as well, that will you be considering revenue streams? Um, serving on the revenue committee right now, we've taken a look at everything from, you know, property taxes, fuel taxes, income taxes. Is that something that's on your agenda? Senator? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Connolly, uh, good question. Uh, of course, the revenue should be handled by the revenue committee, and that's always been my position to recognize each standing committee for the duties they were outlined to do and perform I'd be hesitant to commit at this time that the uh, JAC will be doing anything relative to any, any sort of revenue enhancement. However, you know, the JAC in the past has been known to do things outside our purview and it sure could happen, but I would be hesitant to commit to that and probably say it, pro it will not happen, but stay tuned and we'll see. Okay, thank you, Senator. Are there any other questions for Chairman Bebow? Okay, thank you, Chairman. And if Chairman Bebout, if you wouldn't mind staying with us for a while in case other questions come up when we get to work to work on this, JC, appreciate it. And I'd like to move to uh, Chairman Nicholas, if you have any comments uh, for us this morning. Welcome. Good morning, thank you for uh, having me. Uh, just a couple different things. Um, one is that as we discussed in the last several weeks, if we meet um, virtually in December for the Joint Appropriations Committee, I think it's important that the Management Council give us the leeway to go um, probably as much as 10 days. Uh, because as we walk through agency by agency on a virtual basis, my guess is we, it could easily more than double the time that we normally have when we're just scrolling through section by section and um, division by division on our, in our budget books. In addition to that, I think um, we'll probably need some extra time at the end of the beginning of the day and at the, at the lunch hour and at the, in the evenings, uh, both as a committee individually and, and as the House and the Senate, to kind of regroup, know where we're at, figure out how to make it more efficient and, and to evaluate what we just did. Um, if, if we're gonna kick out a full bill by in December or something close to it, we may even need one or two days for callbacks uh, that could happen in the second week of, of while, 
while we're there. So I, I just think we need as much flexibility as we can to accomplish that. Um, and so I would just ask for that leeway. And that being the case, we will have an issue of an overlap likely with the recalibration committee. And so I know in the, uh, once again, in the past, we've discussed that with Chairman um, Summers and Chairman Kinski on the recal, but I would request that the, just to be safe, that we move that out a couple of days um, to, to accommodate both, obviously, and maybe even do it the, on, on the 21st and 22nd of December. Or on the alternative, we could do it on the first week in December, but um, depending on the need. Um, and, and, what, and that, by the way, is, it raises a, another interesting issue because even though um, to download the Wolf system um, data for state government, in terms of funding education and, and, have, and then having contracts for teachers, a lot of that takes place in March and April. So those folks will need to know budgets for, um, for the school districts well before um, the mi middle of May, I would presume. Um, and so the, the faster that we can get something out of um, recal, the better off for everybody. And, and once again, the, the problem with that is it's, it's I would say it's at least as likely as not that we're not going to have an agreement between the House and the Senate and recal. And if that's the case, then how are we going to resolve those issues um, timely in order to address um, the next fiscal year for schools? So I, those are two important things that uh, uh, primarily, I, like my co-chair, I would like the opportunity to give leeway to us so that as we diagrammed out earlier um, last month, we could move JAC into the larger committee rooms, have um, easily six to 10 feet social distancing by all parties, have room for one or two speakers um, on the dais who are uh, the socially distancing and just require mask to and from and any type of commingling or uh, conversations off, off link so that we can um, where possible and, and, and for those who are interested in it, have as many members as possible here in Cheyenne while we uh, while we do it. I just think that we will turn out a better product the, the more um, the closer we can can work as a team together versus just um, virtually. So, uh, with that in mind, I can I can totally understand how we can, um, with LSO that they can attend virtually. Um, we might get a little plastic bubble that we can put Don in and kind of elevate him and put him up on the ceiling so that. No one can get too close to him, but we'll take as good as care of Don as we can. And and if he needs to be virtual, that's fine. But um, th at least we can communicate, take short breaks when we need to. You know, with uh, when we're working through this, we always like to go back and forth and have questions. And we might need to be popping in and out of um, live streams to some extent as we do that. But as we, as we get going and, and down the road, we'll figure that out as we go and, and definitely make sure we're running it as safe as possible. So um, sure, sure. that's that's kind of my comments, um, I think, that are of use to you. So thank you. Okay. I think Representative Greer has a question. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I think Chairman Nicholas might have covered it, and it, it really is uh, one of my concerns. It, it, as a citizen legislature, we have light staff the way it is, and uh, we've got some very good people, but not a huge bench and don richards is an invaluable asset uh to getting a budget put together and that was my my one concern is i would be uh having it's been quite a few years since i was on appropriations but um without having don's assistance and putting that budget together digging up information the process would grind to a halt so that that was my concern and my question to both chairman bebout and to chairman nicholas is how do you make sure Don is there to help us put to get get across the finish line? Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I've often said over the years, you know, there's a couple folks who run the Department of Revenue that understand mineral taxation. They're the only ones in the world know it. I've always told them they should go to meetings in separate cars. And uh, same with Don Richards. We got, got to make sure we uh, uh, protect our staff, all of our staff. I think uh, Chairman Nicholas, Chairman Bebow, this is going to be similar, you know, on your request for extra days. I think council will be open to that, of course. I think normally uh, uh, 
a supplemental budget is a small markup, you know, literally the the budget bill might, might be this thick, you know, or the budget, you take in two, three, four agencies, maybe. This will be a lot like 15, 16, when Governor Meade cut a quarter of a billion, uh, when oil, gas, and coal crashed 25% in 30 days. And, and it was the largest supplemental budget in our state's history. I mean, it was every agency and a stack of books and it's it just takes time to work through all that so i think council will be open to that are there any other questions i think senator landon has a question uh, thank you mr chairman and and uh, chairman nicholas uh, i appreciate your thoughts with regard to the the k-12 budget deficit uh the issue with regard to when that budget needs to roll out in order for our districts to do their work i, I was trying to process uh, beyond what your thoughts were. And for a long time, I have felt like that we may be looking at a special session to do nothing but deal with that K-12 issue. Uh, is that where you were leading or how do we work our way through that K-12 budget? Is it your thought that in January we can somehow move a, a K-12 budget through? And if we don't, I don't believe, as you don't, I don't think, uh, that we can wait till May. Any thoughts about uh, fleshing that out a little bit and, and kicking around what we might be able to do? I'm going to go to uh, Chairman Summers of the recal first, Representative Nicholas. Mr. Chairman, thank you. And, uh, and, and Senator Landon, I'm just going to take a little little shot at this first first uh i'm not i haven't given up on our committee yet i think we've worked really hard to to have good communications between house and the senate um time will tell whether whether and what we come up with out of recal i i think all of us on recal completely understand the challenges we face and and that we have a very large hole to plug and so, uh, you know, I just don't want to give up on that process by thinking about another process yet. And so that's, uh, you know, that, that'll come next to me, but I, I still have hope that our committee will do, and many members of that committee sit in, in management council here. And I would hope we can put our heads together and uh, come to some agreements. So thank you. Okay, very good. Are there other questions? I appreciate, and Senator Bebout, comments? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And to tag on what uh, Chairman Summers said about recal, <laughs> I'm on that committee and and I would agree with his, his general statements. I think what we're gonna really try to do is to look at those responsible reductions. I think that's a, the, the area we need to look at first, but, but like I said earlier on, I just don't see how we're gonna be able to to do the 15 to 20% cuts to general fund, 15 to 20% cuts to K through 12 without doing a look at revenues. And, and I, you know, I'm an anti-tax guy, I always have been, but then there's common sense. And, you know, that's a, that's a challenge in front of us to provide the leadership to get our way through this. And we just have to have all options on the table. So as a member of RECAL, I look forward to working with Representative Summers. I know Representative Nicholas is on there and others are on the committee as well. So I look forward to, to that discussion and see what we can do for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? I'm gonna keep moving to public comment. I see others. I'm gonna to move to Representative Larson. Thanks for joining us. Do you have some public comment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you uh, for letting me join your uh, your meeting. Um, thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you. You, you betcha. I'm just uh, very concerned that we're trying to uh, not hold session during January. I think, I hope that we look into some other ideas. I, I know the ball's rolling fast. Um, I, you know, are there auditoriums where we could meet or such where we could spread out? Uh, are there options of uh, taking your temperature as you go into the Capitol every day and those that aren't, you know, able to attend, uh, not attend? But I, I'm very worried. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that counted on January and February being the times that we meet and uh, be very difficult for them to meet in April or May. Uh, the farmers and the ranchers, uh, the businessmen that uh, work for those type of businesses. Uh, 
could be really tough. So I, I hope we'd look at that again. Um, the other thing is, is many of us that have rented uh, uh, rooms or, or houses for the session in January and put a down payment. Uh, and I think there's been discussion maybe already that maybe that could be covered, but uh, there's quite a few of us. I got 2,400 bucks already put out on it. Um, so we need to deal with that option. Um, but that, uh, that's pretty much what I had to say. I, I hope we keep trying to to meet in January. I really do. Uh, but we do need to make a decision quick. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you, uh, Representative Larson. Are there any questions for Representative Larson? Okay, and again, I appreciate, I think we do have a solution on those deposits and uh, we're gonna talk about that when we get into working some of these motions and some of that, but again, appreciate your comments. I'm gonna kind of go in order. I see Senator Bouchard uh, has joined us. Thanks for joining us, Senator. Do you have any public comment? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank, you, thank you for allowing me to uh, jump in here. You know, I, I'm, I'm very concerned uh, uh, same some of the same reasons uh, um, Representative Larson talked about. Uh, one, many of us signed up for the dates that are there. There's uh, business commitments that are involved, but uh, I think more importantly, the the people. Uh, I don't I don't see an overwhelming uh, amount of people suggesting we should uh, make make such a a, a drastic change. You know, and what this comes back to to me is, and I, some of you know this story and some of you don't, but my daughter had a SARS incident in, in 2017. And uh, we had to take her out of the hospital here. She was only there half a day. And uh, we had to take her to a hospital that actually would treat her. And they gave her hydroxychloroquine uh, um, and the Zithromax. And, you know, today we look at this and this is, it's, it's like, it's a fear thing that nobody wants to do what works. And I got to tell you how we lead is what the people do. If we live in fear and we don't think outside the box and try to do things uh, uh, for the people, then I don't know if we're leading them right. I mean, uh, the Bo uh, Bulgarian hospitals have, have done internal studies they're even taking hydroxychloroquine and zinc because, and by the way, what they know is that it blocks uh, uh, replication of any virus. What, uh, the hyd hydroxychloroquine allows the uh, um, zinc into the cell and it blocks uh, 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 replication. So my point is there in, Bul in Bulgarian hospitals, seven hospitals, they're actually using it as a protocol for people that work there. Uh, I'm, I'm just, we're just thinking we're, we're going to live in fear. What are we telling our, our constituents to, to live in fear as well? I mean, we, we have, uh, uh, we're moving towards lockdown and then what, we're not going to have any solutions and we're going to bump this thing out. So, and I think that if we're going to move this out into other, uh, into a uh, different date, I think the entire body should vote on it. I just don't think that and it should be on the record. I don't think we should do it the, you know, by a small body making that decision. So anyway, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Questions for Senator Bouchard, uh, Senator Rothfuss. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. It's just a comment because I do think our words matter. And I just want to make sure that the public that's listening understands that there is no evidence indicating that hydroxychloroquine has any therapeutic or preventive effect with regard to COVID-19. All double-blind clinical trials that are randomized have indicated the same outcome, and we should make sure that the public is basing their decisions on sound science, not on hope. Okay, I just, uh, let me just clarify one thing um, for all those folks who are listening. Um, the 65th term is going to be over soon. January 3rd will be our last day. It will be the 66th legislature, right? It'll be that uh, we'll develop rules and do those things. We're going to make suggestions to get us started, and uh, and then there'll be this handoff period. So, uh, Senator, I think this small group, as you mentioned, we will not set the calendar for the 66th. We just, uh, we're in unprecedented times, and 
as we we know there are things we have to do as i mentioned constitutionally swearing in um and and adjourning on or, or uh, gaveling in on the uh, 12th and uh, we'll certainly accomplish those so are there other questions for senator bouchard okay appreciate you joining us today thank you and i'm going to go next to senator james uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm just going to be echoing my, call echoing my colleagues here. You know, I'd also like to say that, you know, we got to think of our constituents and the people that come down to Cheyenne. If we start splitting up the session, it's going to be a huge burden on them to schedule one time to come down there and then wait for us to schedule another time. And the closer these dates are, the more expensive it's going to be, not only for them, but for us as a legislature too. And the closer we get to harvesting time and calving season, some of these legislators aren't going to be able to attend and they're not going to be able to represent their constituents, which is what they were elected for. And that's going to be a huge issue. So, and I, I think that's going to be a huge problem. And this, pro this COVID is not going to go away. So we just need to drive on, do what we are put there to do, have our session at the regular time, and, you know, just carry on. So that's all I'm trying to get across here is we just, it's not going to go away. And as far as vaccines, most of us probably won't even take it. You know, some of us will, some of us won't. Mass, same way. And that's our choice. So, yeah, um, and I will stand for any questions. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for Senator James? Members have any questions? Okay, very good. I see Senator Elect French is on. <clears throat> nice to meet you, even though it is on the Zoom. Thanks for joining us. Uh, would you like to provide any public comment? Yes, can you hear me? Sure can, yeah, perfect. Yeah, well, thanks uh, uh, to you and the members. Uh, being a newbie here, forgive me if I do something out of order. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get the hang of things here. Uh, I just want to comment as a farmer. You know, when I till my fields, uh, far, uh, plow, work it down level, plant, you know, the most crucial time for me is April and May. You know, and my uh, ability to make money is determined by what I do in April and May. So if I'm not able to be there, because I'm very excited to be a, a senator and, and join all you great people. Uh, it's exciting to me. And I want to fulfill that commitment. But I also don't want to get in financial trouble either by not being able to plant my crop. And uh, so, you, you know, that's the thing. And I, I saw somewhere, well, maybe the uh, four day week and then let people go. Well, if the weather, you know, acted that way and it snowed, three or four inches on Monday and then was dry by Thursday night. And when I got home, I could farm for three, four days. That'd be great. But you know, uh, the way it works is if you did that, by the time I got home, it snowed three or four inches when I got home and then be wet and dry when I had to come back. That's just kind of the nature of the spring in Wyoming. So I just wanted to tell everybody, you know, it, it's a real, uh, issue with myself and many ag producers out there a lot of people are cabin and uh or getting ready for their irrigation season fixing their 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 stuff you know getting ready so it, it's crucial time for me as, as a farmer that april and may so i know you guys have a tough decision and and i really respect that you, you truly do but uh, i just wanted to kind of tell you my side of how it works you know i haven't retired yet probably should get kind of gray around the edges uh but i haven't yet so you know i still have commitments on operating loans notes that i gotta pay and if i can't get a crop in and do what i 
normally do in a timely manner, then I risk those things. I, uh, well, I think all of you understand that y'all have, uh, many of you have businesses and things. So that's, uh, my two cents. So thanks for listening. Appreciate it. Thank you, Senator elect. Any questions? The good Senator elect French. Okay. I see one from Senator Rothfuss. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Senator Lex French, thank you so much for those comments and, and uh, for joining us today and uh, providing your thoughts. One question I have for you is if, if you were to get help, if you were to get someone higher out, uh, get additional assistance, something along those lines, I'd ask is, is that a viable option in terms of, of uh, being able to bring in additional help that would be capable of, of doing the job right? That, that's sort of the first question, or, or do you very specifically need to be there, which I would understand if that's the answer, that, that it just doesn't work uh, kind of without the, the homegrown knowledge of, of what needs to get done. Uh, but if, if there is that possibility, I'd be curious what your estimate of, of the associated cost for that would be uh, over the course of, let's say, a month session in May. And, and I'm just trying to think, if, if we do have circumstances where uh, we've got folks that really rely on their own blood, sweat, and tears uh, to get the crop in. Um, I, I'm wondering if we couldn't find a way to compensate for that and, and to honestly just hire out from the LSO some additional support to get that job done, if it's plausible. And if it's not plausible, I'll understand. But I wanted to get your thoughts as somebody who's very directly going to have that experience if we end up with a May session, Senator-elect. So thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll try, I'll try my best, sir. Um, you know, to find somebody that has enough knowledge to run my tractors, my equipment, uh, plant, like I have always planted the crop, and me being a, a, a tutor from afar, this will not work. Uh, you know, and to find somebody that had that kind of knowledge that would maybe work for a month is uh, next to impossible also. Uh, you know, I've never hired people generally for the last, you know, the 45 years that I've farmed, it's been me and my family hands on and we, you know, we know we do it a certain way. And, but it'd be, it would be very difficult to find somebody that, uh, you know, maybe they know how to run a tractor and, and you can go across the field, but also you may make a mistake and uh, do something that cost me ten, twenty thousand dollars by breaking equipment. Uh, so that's would be very difficult in my situation. Yeah, very good. Well, appreciate. That. I think Representative Conley has a question. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and. Welcome, Senator-elect French. I look forward to meeting you. And I just want to comment that in your comments, I think, really bring home the recognition that we have a legislative session that's currently set up for a particular kind of work and worker. It's 100 and 150 years old. And that, like so many other things, with how we've been meeting via Zoom and, and public participation, we're learning a lot through this COVID crisis. And one of those things I think too is about how our legislative sessions have been set up. And it might, it might mean that we need to take another good look at that in the future. And this is a good illustration of it. Um, so just a comment and a thank you for kind of really bringing that kind of to the forefront and our attention. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It'd be great to meet you too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would ask uh, Ms. Cameraman or Direct, Director Obrick, are there other folks who have signed up for any public comment? I know we had 44 written comments from the public and I appreciate those. And every one of them, frankly, said, please delay. But uh, are there any other folks signed up? Can you help Mr. me? Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we do have three, yes. more, um, three, three more members of the public that I'm going to bring in now. That'd be wonderful. Okay, thank you. Thank you all senators and uh, Representative Larson for joining us. Appreciate your comments. Okay, I don't have two screens, so I'm gonna give me a little grace here as I work from page to page on this. I see Ms. Wilkinson. Good morning and welcome. Would you like to provide some public comment? 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, and good morning to you. My name is Catherine Wilkinson. I am here today on behalf of the Wyoming Capital Club. Uh, just wanted to thank you for your leadership during these unprecedented times. I don't know if I have a lot of answers today, but wanted to let you all know that we do stand at the ready to work with you to provide any answers that we can from the registered lobbyists. Um, we did uh, push out a poll and are happy to send out any other questions that you may have. Um, like you, we have a very diverse membership, and so our opinions are all over the board. I will tell you the most common uh, that I have heard is just the uncertainty of when this will happen. And so I know you have a very big decision, uh, but we would just like to pass along that information that any certainty when you can get to it uh, would be wonderful uh, just for people planning purposes and for yourselves as well. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, Management Council. I would stand for any questions you may have. Hey, great. Uh, I appreciate the poll. I thought it was very enlightening. I think you shared that with all legislators and new legislators. Mr. Chairman, I did uh, send it out to all leadership, but I will make sure to get it out today to uh, all the incoming and current legislators as well. Well, I think that'd be very helpful. I think Representative Greer has a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Ms. Wilkinson, I had uh, emailed back a specific question coming off the poll and your response was, well, that's what the poll numbers say, but mine was more refined and it, and it dealt with <clears throat> the question of mere bills. And while your, your um, constituents or your members were almost split on the mere bill process, my question was more specific as to uh, the top three or four committee bills that had been vetted and everyone had an opportunity to speak to them during the interim. Um, and have you had an opportunity to explore that anymore or is that just all thrown into one poll response? And I just wanna clarify the question and, and you know, the mirror bill process, like we do our budget and like we did in the special session in May. And, and these are committee bills that are worked through the interim, start them in both houses to save time. And I think there's real interest. I know Representative Greer and myself, and I think that's the, so members of the public, just give them a little background, Ms. Wilkinson. So please answer that, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Representative Greer. Um, as we stated in the poll with the membership of 100, we have 111 responses for the near uh, bill question that we sent out. Uh, we had 54% were opposed to it and 46% were in favor of it, just for the background of those have not seen the poll. Um, I have not pushed out the specific questions of the top two or three um, or three or four committee bills that have already been worked. I will tell you that one common complaint that I have had from lobbyists is the opportunity for spontaneous testimony has been uh, rather difficult during the virtual process. We do appreciate the opportunity to be able to participate virtually, uh, but a lot of times, unless you sign up, um, anticipating that you may have to speak, um, sometimes issues arise during discussion that we're not able to address. And so that has been the one uh, frustration I have heard uh, consistently from my fellow membership um, lobbyists, uh, but I am happy to push that out specifically on the top bills being selected to go through a mere bill process. So, okay, thank you. And just again, there was like 95 people participated, 95 lobbyists in the Capital Club that participated roughly. I'm just working off my memory here. And Is yeah, just maybe say those numbers again, what you, as far as what folks preference was. Absolutely. We had, I, with the entire survey, Mr. Chairman, we had about 114 people respond. They didn't respond to every single question. For the mere bill process question, we had 111 uh, respondents. The number that was opposed to the mere bill process was 54%, uh, 61 responses. And then those that were in favor of it, it was 46% or 52 responses. Okay, great. And how about my question then, if you could run those numbers, tell the public and tell us just uh, on the results of maybe delaying the session. What were those numbers? And maybe that's where 95 sticks in my head. Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. So the question was, would you be in support of delaying session until a later date in the spring? 
And the answer to that, yes, of 74% or 85 responses. Uh, no was 26%, uh, 30 responses for a total of 114. And these are folks who are working in their capital every day, basically, yep. like yourself. Yeah. Okay. Well, appreciate it. Are there any other questions, Ms. Wilkins? Is there anything you'd like to share with us? Then you will share that survey then with folks, uh, new members and, and uh, current members. Well, I appreciate all your good work. And uh, it's been challenging, and I, I get it. I don't disagree on this spontaneous, you know, but there's these security issues, too, uh, with Zoom, with any of these platforms. And there's security at, you know, face-to-face -face meetings, we know. But uh, so we're just trying to do the best we can and keep working it and refining it and really appreciate your assistance in this process. So thank you very much. Okay, members, any other questions for Ms. Wilkinson? Okay. I'm going to move next. I saw was Mr. Kennedy, Keith Kennedy. Welcome and thanks for joining us. And maybe tell us uh, where you live and who you represent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Keith Kennedy. And I'm also on the Capitol Club board. Uh, and Representative Greer, I will be happy. We will. I actually was the one that put this survey together and I was here primarily to answer any other questions, but we'll We'll certainly push that out to our members. Uh, the only other thing that I would add based on what I've heard so far is, I think we also need to remember that uh, this may very well be uh, cyclical with COVID and, and we can't, and I certainly know that no one here is, is holding back on making decisions as they have to, but it may very well be that by January, you'll see that things are declining and it may be, uh, remember last year uh, when this really hit was in late March and April. So uh, I would just encourage us to keep looking at that data as well. And if there's any other questions that you would like us to push out to our members, uh, we'll be happy to do that. I think it's also worth, worth remembering that most of us, this is our our primary job so we don't have those concerns that more of an issue with getting in touch with our members because they may be involved and unable to respond to us as quickly as they did could during january and february and with that i'd welcome your questions okay well thank you mr kennedy any questions for mr kennedy well keith really appreciate you joining us this morning so Okay, great. I'm going to move next to Ms. Leininger. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman and members of the Council. Uh, Monica Leininger with Powder River Basin Resource Council. Um, I would just like to thank the Council for the discussions this morning on prioritizing the health and safety as we look towards the general session. Um, I think the, the different scenarios laid out by LSO are well-reasoned and those make sense to consider having in the, the whole session, the general session in May with uh, different, different activities taking place uh, in the short term in January. With that, I would just like to say we hear the concerns from our agricultural members about, you know, not being able to participate as much. But I think even so, we all would like to prioritize health and safety. And we know that participation will be increased if that's held later in the year when there's more vaccines and health options available. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll just uh, stand for any questions and thank you for the work of the council. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. Any questions, members? From Ms. Leininger. Well, appreciate you joining us today and uh, thank you for your comments and your work. Okay, I'm gonna move to Mr. Uh, oops, uh, Director Ulbrich. No, Mr. Chairman, go ahead with uh, Mr. Merrill, but Senator Bebout would also like to comment again. So we're gonna let him back in after Mr. Merrill. Absolutely. And I think members, what we're trying to do is, because I don't think any of us have multiple screens today. So it, when you get two, three, four of these placed out, it's just, it gets hard to track. So we're trying to keep those who are on the queue up in front of us. 
And I see Mr. Merrill next. Good morning. Tell us uh, where you're from and who you represent, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Chris Merrill. I'm the Executive Director of the Equality State Policy Center. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk to you today. Um, I submitted written testimony, so I'll keep my remarks brief today. Um, I, I just really want to thank this committee uh, for the thoughtful and deliberative approach you've brought to uh, so many consequential decisions this year. Um, and thank you also for working hard since the onset of the pandemic to uh, in, improve transparency, try to ensure public involvement as much as possible, you know, as we transition to virtual meetings. Um, as outlined in my written comments, uh, the Equality State Policy Center supports delaying the full or abbreviated session, whatever it turns out being until later this spring. Um, for, you know, for all the reasons already mentioned this morning um, by, uh, by Mr. Obrecht and others, and especially, you know, for public safety, the health of our citizen legislators, LSO staff, Capitol staff, you know, Wyoming residents in general. Um, as I mentioned in my testimony in October, you know, um, I also have concerns about potential impacts on Cheyenne Regional Medical Center, creating a potential COVID surge right there in Cheyenne at the height of flu season. Um, and I guess this is on my mind, you know, speaking personally, my, my wife is an oncology nurse uh, here in Laramie. And um, they are already short staffed now at the hospital here in Laramie. And uh, she's worked, she's worked eight straight going on nine straight days just because um, they need to cover, cover shifts. Um, and so, so I guess that's uh, one of the reasons that's on my mind. Um, you know, I, I get the, uh, I, I get the argument, don't be ruled by fear. I've heard that a lot. Um, but it just, again, in my case, personally, if we had an in-person session in January, I wouldn't be able to go and do my job um, because I need, I, I, I can't be away from my family for that long and my, and my kids. And so we have to be really cautious in our household about COVID because, because of my wife's job. And she's working with people who are, uh, who are fighting for their lives, um, getting treatment for cancer. And, uh, and, and we need to think about those, those folks too, when we make these decisions. Uh, there are people who are going to beat cancer and, uh, and live decades with their family, people who love them. And we need to remember that there are vulnerable people. And uh, so when we, when, we, when we think through all of the, uh, these complicated issues, um, I, I, I wanna, uh, I, I just wanna, um, I just hope that we, we keep, we always keep in mind that, that, um, that, that we have vulnerable people in our community who we care about and, and we need to do right by them as well. So um, with that, I'll conclude my remarks and I'm happy to try to answer any questions if there are any, thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, members of council, any questions for Mr. Merrill? Okay, I'm looking and uh, well, again, really appreciate you taking time to join us, Mr. Merrill. I think uh, Senator Bebout uh, wanted to address council more comments. Senator, sure, welcome you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Would it now be an appropriate time to, to bring up another subject or would you rather to do it at the end of your, your meeting? You know, I think uh, given our technology, I think I'd like to hear it right now. Just I think you never know what can happen to the internet in a half hour, an hour from now. So go ahead. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And one of the, the, the concerns, and you and I have talked about at length and so has the Joint Appropriations Committee, my co-chair, Representative Nicholas, is the CARES money. And, and I looked uh, as of last Friday, uh, it seems to me that we are about 600, 650 million short of getting the money out the door. And I, I've always felt we should be aggressive to the point of uh, being re responsible in how we do that. And if you look at that number, we've got what, 36 days left to kick out that amount of money, $16 million a day. I'm not sure we'll get it done. 
Uh, who knows what Congress may or may not do about extending the December 30th date. Don't know what, uh, what management council may or may not do about that at this late in the game. But to me, that's, that's, uh, that's something that's, it's just going to be a shame if that money leaves the state goes back there. There's a lot of need in our state for those funds, particularly small businesses, restaurants, all of the above. And all of you in management council are very aware of that. So that's just something that's really on my mind. I think what we'll do, Mr. Chairman, in the, in the JAC meetings, we'll talk about that. Uh, however, you know, when we get to that point, there's not much we can do. And, and I don't know really other than a quick special session, but this late date, that's pretty remote. Uh, let's just hope that we get an extension and we can move through that and do something next year to, to try to utilize those funds in the way they were intended to. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me that opportunity. Yeah, to... no, I'll stay on, Senator. And I think uh, really appreciate you bringing up that point. And I think, um, you know, it wouldn't take much. I think if the JAC continues to work at that and, I, and maybe a member of council will make that motion that uh, you continue to monitor that and perhaps you put together a small bill. You know, part of that would be uh, that attorney general language. Part of it might be couple small priorities to spend that money and you could really do that in a half day session i mean we know we've done that the 65th has done that you could get together literally and run the mirror bill and and uh, do that rather quickly and uh, i agree with you and i think uh get that money and put it to use for our state and uh so i really appreciate you bringing that up members any questions to send or be about on that issue Okay, Senator, again, I really appreciate you bringing it up. It's perfect timing. Thank you. Okay, is there any other public comment out there? Mr. Sarah, is anybody else? I think I would see them. Uh, that, that should take care of the public comment, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Uh, Council, is there any, you know, I think uh, before we move to uh, make motions and do those kind of things, any discussion among Council? Anything that members would like to bring up? Um, Representative Speaker-elect Barlow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Speaker. So it, it would be handy if we could take off all the public commenters off the screen so we could get more of us on one screen because we still have lots, uh, unless you want to anticipate calling on them, that would be handy so I could get on the one screen, I could see all my colleagues. Thank you. I think we're in pretty good shape, at least on my screen. I count uh, 12 of you and I see President Perkins' shiny face on his picture. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay, members of council, any discussion? Representative Greer. Uh, so, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, as we are looking at uh, and contemplating the delayed session, there, there was Actually, um, you know, when I was thinking in terms of agriculture, you know, I, I was thinking about calving season and branding season. And, and of course, that varies from producer to producer by, by three months throughout the spring. And, you know, heck, we got people that calve at fall calve and people that calve uh, in uh, July, actually. Um, the, the one thing I hadn't contemplated, and, and shame on me in my current position, uh, were, were those members uh, who worked the soil. Uh, and so Senator Luck French brought up a pretty good point. You know, you get in, uh, those crops have to go in at a certain time in May. And uh, just depending upon, unless you're, you know, somewhere around a 10,000 acre operation, you basically are every component of, of that operation. I, I really hadn't considered that. And so that those were good comments by him. And just one of those things we need to be aware of is that, you know, for a hundred years, we've had a tradition. Well, that tradition is time to change or not. I'm not going to debate that, but people did run for office um, with an understanding of when they would be tied up. I, you know, I, for one, January is a very busy time for me, but, but I understand that and, um, and have accepted that to, to uh, serve in the legislature. But um and it, I mean, our decision's not not easy. I think we've got to get a plan put out, but that is um, one of those things we do need to have in the back of our mind. Very good. Any other members, any comments? 
<clears throat> uh, Senator Landon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I, I really appreciated the testimony this morning. Uh, wanted to comment. Uh, we had some good senators weigh in and uh, indicated uh, that most of their constituents want us to meet in January. And um, I just wanted to represent a group that uh, that we have alluded to, but they did not testify. And that's all of the people who help us pull off one of these sessions. Um, I can't tell you how valuable uh, I believe they are. Uh, we just flat out do our jobs without the staff that we have. And uh, that includes, of course, our permanent staff who are rock stars, but we've got, we've got people who come to those regular s sessions that we do in Cheyenne uh, who are retired from their professions and come in to help us. Um, I bet if you did a survey of those folks, um, none would probably be wanting real badly to work a session. Uh, and so I just wanted to represent that. We, you know, it's not really all about us. It's about everybody else. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I appreciate your comments and that's exactly right. I mean, we've, uh, you know, Speaker Elect Barlow and I, you know, we attended a funeral of a staffer. Representative Barlow eulogized her. We get it. And uh, I agree with you totally. I mean, uh, you know, and I think this whole idea of a vaccine too, you know, and that's got to go. I'm not going to advocate for us to stand in line first as necessary workers, you know. I mean, there's a lot more folks that need that. And, and, uh, you know, that first shot at all those things. So there's a lot of things out there. And again, I would just ask membership, new and old, members of this council, members of the public, keep communicating and give each other a little bit of grace. And uh, we all get into that spotlight effect where we only see what we see. And there's always more to it. There's always a bigger thing that we need to focus on. And I appreciate you uh, bringing that up, Senator Land. And there's a big focus here. And I think that's part of this process, you know, as a group, we'll be able to see that entire focus and, uh, and uh, do this the right way. Any other discussion? Members of the uh, Senator Dockstetter, President-elect Dockstetter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker. If you're doing this all encompassing, we're kind of talking about what we would do as meeting as a whole. I'd come back to the JEC part. Uh, I, I like that concept that our two chairs offered that, uh, we leave them some discretion. We give them some extra days and let them, let them go to work and, and get that ready for the session. That's, that's the only thing I'd add at this point, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, very good. Appreciate that. Well, members, I think we're at that point. I think if we want to make some motions and get to work on this, is there a uh, speaker like Barlow has his hand up. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So management council members, I shared some motions with you this morning that I've um, been developing and visited with a few of you in the last couple of days about. So Matt, is it possible to put those on the screen so that the public can see what management council is considering? And just so the public knows, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, I just shared these with the staff um, or with the, my colleagues and the staff this morning. So this isn't something that's been sitting out there for three weeks in a drop and it's literally been was edited this morning. Um, so, Mr. Speaker, um, would you like me to move these and go forward? Or do you want me to explain it first? What's your sure. preference, Mr. Chairman? Your preference. You've got the floor, Representative. Um, I think you make the motion and then we discuss it. Okay, Mr. Chairman, then um, I'm not, I, I guess I can read the entire motion, but it's certainly it's available for everyone. Is I move legislative leadership develop and implement a plan delaying the majority of the legislative working days of the 2021 general session of the Wyoming legislature until a date after the initial convening of the session on January 12th, 2021. To facilitate this session planning, I further move that joint appropriation, JAC budget hearings and markup, markup and bill considerations will proceed in December, 2020 in a virtual format that JAC members may participate from the Capitol. Two, legislative leadership work with their respective rules committees, chief clerks, LSO, draft, develop the rules, both joint rule, uh, individual house rules and joint rules for consideration of the January 21st convening. Um, 
this is one number three is and I, I, maybe i'll start paraphrasing a little bit so i don't uh, is uh, this is about swearing in members prior to the initial um, the returning members prior to the um, january 12th as you know our our terms actually start on january 4th so returning members could be sworn in prior to that. Number four, I feel very strongly about giving newly elected members the option, the option to swear in with their class on convening day in the chambers. Um, you know, I, I, I'm still serving with some of the members of the 62nd. Um, of course, Speaker Harshman is the last of the 57th, but we know what that class that class gathering means. And so I would like that with their guests um, and appropriate uh, measures taken for them to have that opportunity. They're not able to fulfill that or willing, wish to uh, partake in it or can't partake in it. Certainly there'll be other, those other arrangements. Um, that on the 12th, we, we convene virtually um, for the commencement of our 2021 general session. Number six, um, that in the convening, we know there are there is necessary initial business that we need to accomplish. I've listed some of what I what we know of, and, um, and if there's certainly anybody else has something else, um, but those things we know um, are necessary or um, appropriate. And then number seven, I think this is the latitude that uh, at least I am comfortable with as an incoming member of leadership in the 66 is, Let's do the best we can with the information we have as it becomes available. The public health issues, the staff, are, um, the, the, the concerns about um, agriculture, et cetera. Um, and, I, and I am very um, sensitive to all of those. Um, but Mr. Chairman, that is a, a summary of the motion that I, would, I move. Thank you. Is there a second and then we'll discuss? Okay, I see uh, multiple seconds. I think uh, Senator Anselmi Dalton is on my current screen. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, members of council, and, uh, yeah, there we got the screen back. And then um, is there discussion, please? Any discussion? Uh, President elect Dockstetter. So I see where we're going here with this, but let me, uh, let me ask you. So, for example, that first one, as we deal with uh, JC, I lost it on my screen. Anyway, that we, uh, do you want it amended at that point in there to give the chairs their discretion? Uh, how do you want to do this, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman? I think, uh, Mr. President elect, Senator Dockstetter, I think you can am amend the motion. Absolutely. Right now would be the appropriate time. And we've had those discussions. So go ahead and make that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I make a motion that, uh, uh, and I'm just trying to recall everything that was in number one there, but uh, dealing with JAC, that they do meet in December and that we give the chairs the discretion to meet either virtual or in person and that we give them their extra 10 days if that's what they request to get their work done. And I think Senator Landon has seconded that. And then I and I'll just repeat, and I think many of those things are already in the motion. The biggest part, I believe, is the extra days. Right. Uh, and I'm looking at Director Olbrick, and I think those other two points you brought up are already in there about members can meet in person if they'd like, if they so choose. Director, is that how you see that? Can you, uh, Mr. Chairman, can we bring that up somehow on the side, or how does it work? Yeah, I think so. We can toggle back and forth. I think Anthony Sarah's at the controls. <laughs> uh, Senator Landon, why we're waiting for that to pop back up. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to uh, just to think out loud for a, a moment about, um, um, you know, one of the pieces of this motion uh, deals with uh, the ability of our newly elected members to come to the chambers and to perhaps bring uh, four guests. And I'm, I'm trying to do the math. And okay, Mr. Senator, I'm gonna hold you up here a minute. We're on the motion. We're on the amendment to the motion right now. I oh, wanna say on that on the JAC piece. And I think Senator Rothfuss has a point on that. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, on, on the 
on the concept of JAC meeting in December overall, and then flexibility for additional days, um, it, I don't honestly know why we're doing that. And, and I know that there was some desire expressed to do that, but as I think about the process and the timeline, if we are going to end up with a delayed session, one of the challenges we have each and every regular year is how awkward the timing and schedule is for the JAC to do their work, where they, they get together, they hurry like crazy, uh, and then an entirely different JAC comes along, revisits a lot of the same questions, uh, a lot of the work is done before the Craig report is released. Then the Craig report is released. And then uh, if, if there's any substantial changes, you, you, you have to restructure everything. It, so historically, we've just been tremendously inefficient, I, I think, in terms of being able to schedule an appropriate approach to budget hearings uh, and, and particularly in the um, supplemental budget. This is the odd year when we actually have an opportunity to do a rational schedule to get the Craig report and then to calmly have hearings thereafter with the new JAC that leads to a supplemental budget that's referred to the legislature. And I'd prefer to just take advantage of that and do it the right way. I, I understand that I'm, I'm probably the only one that's going to going to feel that way perhaps, but uh, it, it's the one chance we'll have to actually have a reasonable schedule for budget hearings based on the Craig report in a timely fashion with the appropriate legislators sitting in the chairs. Uh, so that's what I'd favor instead of providing more flexibility for more days, particularly when we know that December is probably going to be the most dangerous time that we're going to face with regard to COVID to pack a few people into the into the chambers or, or excuse me, into the, um, the Capitol so that they can get together and go through this exercise, which will then be dismissed and, uh, and redone a second time. It just sounds like unnecessary danger, unnecessary cost, and uh, really an awful lot of time of both staff and legislators that they're not going to get back while simultaneously uh, taking on additional risk. So I understand why it's there. I understand that the there's a desire to have JAC meet a bunch. We heard discussion about that, but it's more from desire than logic. I think that it's, it's driven and uh, I'd, I'd actually be more in favor of, of just eliminating number one and, and, uh, and letting us go with a schedule that protects staff, protects the legislators and, uh, and utilizes a timeline that's more appropriate based on what we see ahead of us. Uh, those are my comments, Mr. Speaker. Thank, Thank you, Senator, and I appreciate that. And I think, you know, I, I hear you. And uh, I'll just comment on your comments. I hear you totally. But I think uh, we're going to have to put in two weeks on this thing one way or the other. And, and if, it, if we have a session in late January or February or March or whenever, there'll be some I, I know that Craig is committed to even come back and do what I call the three week Craig, you know, three weeks before we come in. So we know we're going to have the January Craig. Uh, and then if it's the March Craig or whatever, there's still going to be some touch up. But I think these 10 days, you know, I don't disagree with you, but, you know, it's more than one way to price skin this cat. And I, I don't disagree, but uh, but I am going to vote for the motion but okay members any other discussion thank you senator i appreciate your comments and i only see part mr. of you so i'm moving around a little bit i see mr. representative chairman. summers mr chairman thank you and and so mr chairman i do uh i do support a virtual format for jc particularly just to, to keep staff and agency people um safe and that gives uh jc members the option to be there in person to work from a virtual format or to, to be remote, depending on their situation. Um, and I certainly support added days um, onto that schedule. And I think there's no reason we can't bump recal to the next week, the first couple of days. You know, to, uh, to kind of answer some of Senator Rothfuss's question, and I think the reason that you wanna, that we should consider doing JC now is simply it does provide more options later. 
if we don't do it now and then we have three weeks or two weeks set aside if you get it done now then you have the options i guess you have the flexibility no matter when you may decide this the, the session is safe or in whatever form you br want to bring it so i just think doing it now provides us more options later um, but I certainly do support a virtual format. So I'm, I want to understand the motion and whether we're retaining that virtual format, only just adding days. So I do want to understand the motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I want to uh, just clarify. This is how I understand it. I'm going to repeat it. It's Joint Appropriations Committee. It's number one. Budget hearings, markup, and bill considerations will proceed December 2020 in a virtual format. JC members may participate from the Capitol and flexibility on additional days is really how I'm reading that. That's really the amendment to this motion. Uh, Senator Dockstetter, any- Thank you, Mr. Chairman, that? that's correct. Uh, either if they are uncomfortable being there in person, it's the virtual option, but they are also allowed to be in the Capitol and one of our co-chairs said we can find the appropriate room for that. And uh, I think we should respect the work of our, or requests of our co-chairs. They've asked for that and that this amendment uh, allows them to proceed with their work. I would not call their work inefficient at all. They, they put endless hours into that budget. So I ask for your favorable su support on that amendment. Okay, so to, to answer Representative Summers, it is a virtual format, but JAC members can participate just like it says, and we're adding flexibility of days. Okay, Representative Freeman, and then Representative Conley. I just have a, a simple question. Uh, we have additional days. Um, that sounds like a blank check to me. Should we have some number of days in there um, to go forward? Or are we comfortable with that? Okay. Members will probably circle around back to that. Okay. Uh, anybody want to respond to that? Representative Conlon. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I too have a question about the wording right now and might need to do a, a, a further amendment. I am concerned about staff right now when we have a virtual format as it's written right now there is absolutely no obligation or expectation that staff is in the room and i'd like to be assured that that would continue with the jac hearings as well i mean there was kind of a joke with uh, chairman nicholas about putting don richards in a bubble hanging from the ceiling and i want to make sure we don't go down the road of the bubble hanging from the ceiling and instead that don is in his office and so if I could have a little clarification about what exactly virtual format means for in particular kind of financial staff. Hey, anyone wanna, I'm gonna scroll screens here, represent Summers or Barlow or Doc Stetter, Senator Guru. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I too, um, you know, I am in favor of the motion up until the word format and then and then it, what I'd, I don't know if we consider it a friendly amendment or not but just say to allow the chairs to uh, the latitude on days and participation from the capital so we can kind of drill down on that question that uh, representative Conley asked because I too have the same you we all know the truth here if we ask the staff what they want to do, they'll tell us we'll do whatever you want us to do i want to make sure we don't put them in an awkward situation i want to try to work with work with within our within the jac as a member to try to make sure that the staff is separated from us anyone who chooses to go down there i personally will not choose to go there but i want to make sure and same thing with the people who present i don't want to set up a scenario where they feel like they have to come to the capitol and present because they feel that's what they should do that they really have that option. So if we just, like I said, I don't know if the, if the, if the good Senator who made the motion wants to help me out here with, the, with the, uh, just giving the chairs the discretion to work through those, those details, participation from the Capitol by members and staff. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The uh, President-elect Doc Stetter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
we have two chairs full of wisdom and intelligence, they'll be able to make that decision. And when we have we not made sure our staff was safe? Uh, let's get the work done in December. Let's not stumble over some of the details. People can have that choice virtual or in person. Choice is a wonderful thing. So let's let's proceed and, and get the work done. Okay, now we are on the motion and you can see it's the motion uh, amendment to the motion and it's really dealing with number one. And you can read number one. And as I read it, then you would add to that this flexibility of days. And, um, and I think I'd like to solve that issue. And then if there's further <laughs> amendments to this motion. Okay, sensing you're ready to vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand on the amendment to the motion, really dealing with number one. And I'm gonna scroll screens. I count one, two, three, four. Oh, and I'm gonna scroll somebody's mic. Perkins mic. votes aye. Five, six, and, and Senator Perkins, that's seven votes that I count. Okay, that will be a majority. Those opposed, please raise your hand. And I count one, two, two votes and so there's some i'm missing i just want to make sure uh i'm going to ask for those eyes again to raise your hand and just hold them and i'm scrolling screen so give me a little patience all those in favor then have given you this flexibility of days one two three four. perkins votes aye perkins is eight nine ten eleven there it is okay i think i got that now i think i Okay, all those opposed, please raise your hand. Okay, and now that math lines up. Okay, two opposed. Okay, so that motion's been adopted on those days. Now, as we work down through this, I think I'm just gonna work this kind of like a, uh, a bill if there's any amendments to this motion. We've done number one. Any further amendments to number one? Mr. Number Chairman, uh, Matt Obrecht, just- Yeah, go ahead. Just wanna have a, a quick clarification on how I understand that motion and how it'll be implemented. Um, since it remained a virtual format and terminology here matters because we've used virtual, hybrid and in-person before, but, but your motion still says virtual. So here's how I understand that. Virtual, but JAC members may participate from the Capitol. So we can have JAC members in a room in the Capitol together, socially distanced, they will all be appearing on, on their own Zoom feed. They'll have their laptop or whatever computer setup they want in front of them. They'll be on earphones then uh, so they don't get feedback from each other. And there won't be any members of LSO staff or the public in that meeting with them. The rest of uh, anyone who's not on that committee will be appearing virtually. And, and that's my understanding of what a virtual format is and how we've always used it. Hybrid's got a different meaning, and I just want to make sure council's all aware of my understanding of what that is and how we will implement that moving forward. Okay, very good. Any questions on that, members? So I it'll just be, Mr. Chairman, it'll just be JAC members in that room and no one else. Yeah, that's how I understand virtual as well. Any other? Okay, thank and you. And you know we can do breakout rooms on Zoom. Uh, we'll be able to figure that out and work through it. I think it's a good format. I think we can make it work for sure. I just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, thank you. Uh, Representative Summers has his hand up. Um, Mr. Chairman, this is a question for Matt Obrick. And and Matt, just uh, kind of on the 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 ability to add in extra days. Is it all right to? switch recal to that next week like monday and tuesday before christmas is that uh is that viable just trying to understand what our you know if we're actually able to do that just mr chairman um representative i don't know off the top of my head why it wouldn't be viable um to do that right now you know lso staff uh, doesn't usually make big Christmas travel plans, uh, especially before a general session. So I don't know of any. The, the one thing is, th that was one of the dates we were considering for the last management council meeting of the year. Um, 
we need one more meeting to wrap up the sixth and fifth, but we can I do that as Christmas Eve. Never yeah. know. Uh, I think that I think uh, Mr. Wilmarth is probably listening in and is working in right now, and uh, he can go to work on that and see if that's viable with uh, with all the folks who are involved in that meeting, and uh, we'll all be flexible. So thank you, Representative Summers. Anyone else, any comments in on that? I, and uh, Director Ulbrich, I, just so you know, I'm going to work down through this, any amendments to this motion. The motion is on the table, but I think members might want to take a look at each one. Okay, I'm going to just move down through then to number two. Any amendments to that motion? I don't see any. And number three. Don't see any there. Number four. Okay, Representative Conley, I have a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On number four, I'd like to make a motion with the, to change the wording of the last sentence and go into the last two lines of that last sentence where it says that uh, attending the swearing in and that compliance with public health related orders or request is required for members and guests. So changing the strongly encouraged to required for members and guests. So I'll just repeat it, remove strongly encouraged and put required. Correct. Now I understand that and that's been seconded. Okay, discussion. Uh, Members, uh, Representative Connell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I think I think it's clear from all of our discussion that the health and safety of our staff and the public, as well as the members, is our primary consideration. And I don't think we should be exempting ourselves from that primary consideration. And it, it's only fair to everyone that that we follow those same rules. Any other members? Any discussion? And if I don't see you speak in, uh, President-elect Doc Stetter and then Representative Freeman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I don't think we have to command them in their every move to come down and get sworn into office. Let's, uh, let's give them that option. And, and while I'm on the topic, uh, why do we have four, if not six? Uh, this is a very special time for these people. And uh, I think they'll respect staff and all involved, but uh, let's give them the option to make sure that their families are there, the numbers they need to be there, and let's not dictate to them how they have to be there. This is, this is a, this is crucial. Do you ever stop to think of how many people get elected to serve in the legislature? This is a, this is a, this is a prime example of how we just need to reach out and welcome them into the legislature and not start with the dictates to how they'll come in and be sworn in. I think uh, just a quick comment on that. And I, you know, I, um, first of all, those public health orders do not affect the second story of the Capitol. And it's going to be the presiding officers who are going to make those decisions. Uh, I just, I think it's very important. So I'm, and I, I'm going to, so I'm going to gently nudge back uh, Representative Conley on that. But I would say, and I don't know this, but Speaker Barlow is going to work through this, and you will too, uh, President Docksetter. You know that the seating capacity for fire, the fire code, and the safety part is going to drive somewhat. I don't know the numbers in the Senate, new members, and the new members in the House, and I know Speaker Elect Barlow is working those numbers. I think that's why four are probably, but not to get out in front of this. Okay, that's my comments on the motion. Any. I think Representative Freeman was next, and then I see Senator Rothfuss. Uh, I must have waved my hand in a funny situation. I didn't intend to speak. <laughs> okay, Sen Senator Rothfuss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One of the concerns about just letting people do what they want, so to speak, and uh, assuming that they'll make choices that are good for them is that their choices affect other people. And, and that's the challenge that we face so often with this circumstance. Uh, for example, if I were a new member uh, and, and I wanted to show up, uh, I, would, I would show up if I knew that appropriate health practices and uh, mitigation techniques and distancing and masking and, and all of the recommended uh, 
procedures and best practices were going to be in place. Then I'd feel comfortable. Then I'd bring my family. Uh, if those aren't in place, I don't bring my family. Uh, I, I wouldn't do it because I, I do not trust that everyone is, is going to do the right thing just given the right circumstances because we know uh, that many people choose not to. So unfortunately, there's no way to give everyone free choice. That's the, that's the struggle we have right now uh, since it's not a cho- I'm not making a choice for me. I'm, I'm making a choice for others when I choose whether to mask or whether to social distance. So I know that we have folks in our caucus that won't show up probably uh, because they take this very seriously and they're not going to bring their families and put their families at risk if we don't have requirements that people adhere to best practices. That said, I unfortunately do agree uh, with Speaker Harshman that we've already exempted ourselves from pretty much everything anyway. So whether we have the language there or not, it really does come down to the presiding officer's desires of how things will go. And, and it's the next presiding officers that will have the say in that regardless of what we write into this motion. So uh, it, it's not going to have a significant effect one way or another. But I guess I would just ask that when a policy is being written it, and when this decision is being made, that some thought is given to the folks that do want to show up in person. They want to be there and they want to be a part of this and they want their family to be there. Uh, But if everyone is not going to be following best practices of health officials and what the science says is the right thing to do, then you are making a choice for them. They will not come. So it goes both ways and, and, uh, that said, uh, I don't know that the motion will end up making much difference in the end, although I'll support the motion because I support the intent of it. Hey, any more discussion on the motion, Senator Landon? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and, and my apologies for jumping to this earlier on, but uh, you mentioned a couple of things I was going to bring up. My question uh, regarding the just the language um, that leads into the motion is, the newly elected members being offered the option of being sworn in on January 12th. I guess you go to the previous paragraph to, to find that maybe they could swear in the week of January 4th in some other format, because I think Senator Rothfuss brings up a very good point. If we certainly don't want to close anybody out of the opportunity to, to be sworn in in the Capitol uh, and those who are uncomfortable with uh, with sharing germs uh, simply wouldn't show up. And so what is the other option? If, if they're not sworn in on this January 12th, what is the other option? Okay, any further discussion? Okay, we have a motion. Mr. Chairman. And I think uh, Mr. Speaker-elect uh, Barlow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, and I, I appreciate the um, the intent of the motion. I certainly appreciate the last component that Senator Landon brought about. Um, what is the other option if they opt not to be sworn in on the 12th? And I think that's a simple motion to number three to add and new members um, to that motion. So if folks did not feel comfortable, it would certainly be my intention. Um, and as, as you know, the the current, the incoming leadership is not affirmed until we actually convene. And so while it it would be, um, it's kind of, uh, I guess it's, it's, it's a challenging place. And what is the intent of this motion? The intent of this motion is to have it as safe as we can and give people's people options to, um, to do what they feel is best for they and their families for these new members. So, I'm, I understand the motion. I won't support it. I will support a set, another subsequent motion to add new members to number three. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Any other discussion? Representative Conley, your motion, why don't you bring us home on this? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I mean, I do understand the good discussion about honestly that that portion of the sentence is probably not enforceable anyway. 
but it does set out for us what what the expectations are and it says to kind of current and new leaderships kind of the direction that management council would like you to take as you think about setting up this special day and i'm going to have another motion on this one in just a second um, about that day but it does set up our expectations to that new leadership about what we expect and again it's an expectation of putting health and safety of the staff and the public front and center with both them and with membership. And so I'd encourage us to vote aye. Hey, thank you. Okay, we're voting on this motion. Everyone understands motion. And uh, the amendment to, uh, to this motion, I should say, it's an amendment to the motion. And uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand and I'm gonna scroll screen. All those in favor of the motion, hold them up there, please. Okay, I count one, two, three, four. Now just hold them up there, I'm gonna recount. I'm counting those that are in favor of the motion. One, two, three, four. Okay, all those opposed to the motion, please raise your hand. Senator Perkins. Perkins, no. One, so Perkins is one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to count one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perkins is eight. That motion has failed. Okay, any other motions then? Uh, Representative Conley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And actually, I have a question for the good bringer of the motion once I looked at it more carefully. Um, the relationship of four and five, both having January 12th as the date. And one of my, and I understand that, that we need to begin our session on January 12th by the constitution. But I am curious about having newly elected members being sworn in on that date specific um, on number four and thinking that then we're going to have perhaps way too many people in the Capitol on that day. And so a little discussion about that, but my motion would be to simply remove in number four, the specificity of January 12th so that it's possible that that group swearing in could be a day or two ahead of time and allow for members to get back home again so that they can participate virtually. So Mr. Chairman, first, just a little bit of clarification from Representative Barlow and then <laughs> maybe a motion. Okay, thank you, Representative Barlow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I guess I, I was not specific that the swearing in would be part of the initial opening of the legislature. So you could make the, uh, it could be either way. It could be new members swearing at 10 o'clock with their families, chief justice is there or the justice is there, everybody disperses. We convene at 11 o'clock virtually as, as the next one talks about um, in wherever they are, wherever they are. Um, I did not assume that they would be I mean, I, I'm, this does not make the assumption that would be part of that opening ceremony that they would be sworn in on the floor with the guests in the room. So I left that little bit of flexibility for the presiding officers as and the that tail end of planning. Um, so I just throw that out. I, 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 and that was purposely left um, open. Thank you. Okay, Representative Connell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Then what I'd like to do, um, is make a motion that in item four, we remove January 12th. So again, we can have some flexibility that would allow members who are sworn in together to be able to get home to participate in that virtual session or else there's the issue regarding how are they going to set themselves up to participate virtually. So again, my motion is to remove January 12th and we will leave it to kind of leadership and staff to decide on the best day. Okay, so that's a motion. Is there a second? Is that Representative Summers second? Okay, I'm looking for a second so we can discuss. It's seconded by Senator Anselmi Dalton. Okay, Representative Summers. Can't hear you, Representative. I think you're muted. Mr. Chairman, sorry, thank you. 
Um, I just I got a kind of a text from a, a member of the of the house that said they can't see any of our votes, so I don't know when we vote if we want to go back to that expanded screen of members. So oh. one, it would help you count, and two, it would uh, uh, allow the, I think the public to see what we're doing. Sure, absolutely, we can do that. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Senator and Selmy Dalton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was just going to ask uh, Representative Connolly if it would be friendly to say that they would be sworn in um, after January 4th, um, but prior to January 12th, so that we keep it within that week. Because um, can they actually be sworn in prior to January 4th? I know that's what happens when people are appointed, but I'm thinking maybe to amend it that way. What are your thoughts, um, Ringer, Representative Connolly? Representative Connolly? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I mean, that that is the intent of it, Senator Anselme Dalton, but I'm pretty confident that and no one can be sworn in before the fourth. So that is actually what that what would happen. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, President elect Dockstetter. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I think we're fine holding that January 12th as a target date to get our work done. I, I think the concerns expressed there are not as serious as what we think they are, that, that we can get in there and we can use our wisdom and making sure that uh, we have the people distance, we have the space, we need to do it in, in waves that we're just fine and we leave that up to the leadership coming up. So I, I'll be opposed to the amendment. Okay, anyone else discussion? Okay, I think since then you're ready to vote on this amendment to the motion. Okay, now we're gonna go full screen. Okay, all those in favor of this amendment, please raise your hand. Hold it up there, I see, and everybody can see now. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Okay, all those opposed, raise your hand. Perkins, no. Okay, Perkins will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that motion has failed. Okay, now if we can go back to the... Um, the motion here and see it up here. Okay, we're on number four there. And uh, Re Representative Speaker Elect Barlow. Mr. Speaker, I would, I would like the opportunity to go back to number three to accommodate something that was that came up in number four, but I can, in the you discussion before, but I can wait until we're all the way through if you'd like. Please, please do. Uh, Mr. Speaker, so I would like in number three, second, second, or second line, um, to just strike the word returning, so that either new members or returning members would have the option to be sworn in um, during that week of January 4th. So just strike returning from that line. Okay. Seconded by Senator Anselmi Dalton. Any discussion? Okay, let's go full screen and we'll vote quickly. Okay, all those in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. Hold it Perkins, up. aye. Perkins is an aye. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That is unanimous. Okay, thank you. Now, if we could go back to the motion on the screen so the public can see it. Okay, thank you, Representative Barlow. Now we've done three and four. Are we moving on to five? Any amendments? Okay, number six. And that anchor piece, of course, means the presiding officers, just like we did in May. Okay, number six. Including, these are the things we have to do, right? But not limited to. Okay, and then number seven, are there any amendments to the motion? Okay, I see none. Okay, members, are we ready? Uh, President-elect Dockstetter. I think you're muted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think seven is crucial because it leaves the, the options open, it allows the the leadership in place at the time to uh, can uh, decide the best course of action. So uh, 
I see where we're going with that. And that, that's a good fix as we come back and, and get the uh, new leadership in and we move forward. I agree 100%. I think we're every day is different, certainly every week. And I think, you know, we'll use our collective wisdom and the leadership of the 66 will do a great job. Keep everybody safe and do the right thing. So thank you. Okay, Senator Guru, your hand. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just a question on number six, the previous one, and it just, I think I know the answer to this, but I want to be clear by, by adopting, you know, by saying adopting rules at that point, the whole body can vote on adopting rules, whichever rules that they want to make changes. They want to make, you know, some of the things that were talked about today about management council deciding things. It's at that point that the 66 will be able to make the rules going forward at that point. Correct. Yes, and after the election of leadership, yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, Speaker Lech Barlow. Thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker. So if you will, certainly my, my interest is going, if you look back at number two, is that we've got a, it's not, this is not a normal time um, in just transitioning as, as the good chairman said. And so as I, as I, as number two was in there very specifically so that we actually think hard about the rules that we will take to our bodies to be adopted on that first day. And then, as you know, we have temporary rules and then we adopt, you know, at some point later, permanent rules. And so, but my, my view is that this, our rules committees, chief clerk, we've got a lot of work to do in the next six weeks to prepare a set of rules for our bodies to consider that take as much as we can, both public health wise and actually operational to Senator Rothfuss's point about the budget, et cetera, all of those components into consideration so that we can adopt a set of rules that allows us to efficiently do the work that we are responsible to do. So thank you for bringing up the rules because I think that is probably the number one priority for at least for me as an incoming presiding officer to be working with on. Thank you. Very good. Okay, any other discussion before we vote? Uh, uh, President-elect Dockstetter. Uh, the Speaker-elect uh, brings up a good point. Uh, Senator Grew brings up a good point. We're moving those rules into a, an area where the bodies, both bodies, as I see it, have more input. Absolutely. Okay, very good. Okay, seeing no hands up to uh, speak, I think we're ready. Uh, Director Ulbrich, is this just a voice vote or do we need to uh, take a roll call on this motion? Mr. Chairman, let's take the roll call on it. I agree, I think so, I'd be good, that's what I'd prefer. Okay, so who is gonna, is Ms. Cameron gonna call the roll? Thank you. Yep, Senator Anselmi Dalton. Aye. Senator Dockstetter? Aye. Senator Driscoll? Aye. Senator Grew? Aye. Senator Landon? Aye. Senator Rothfuss? Aye. Representative Barlow? Aye. Representative Connolly? Aye. Representative Freeman? Aye. Representative Greer? Aye. Representative Summers? Aye. Vice Chairman Perkins? Aye. Chairman Harshman? Aye. 13 ayes. Okay, very good. Thank you. I appreciate everyone's hard work on this and uh, uh, appreciate everybody's work. Okay, are there any other motions out there? Any other things dealing with the uh, Representative Barlow? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first a uh, request that LSO um, amend the motion or add the amendments into the motion and then provide that on our LSO on our website with the Management Council minutes so that the public can see what we've what we how it's been amended. That'd be my first question. Then Mr. Chairman, um, I would move uh, another motion that I provided to my colleagues on Management Council. It's uh, it comes under draft management Council motion number two. 
And Mr. Speaker, um, there's a little bit of a forward there. As some of you know, and we had that co uh, comments from our, a good colleague this morning, and I've reached, received uh, suggestions from other folks as well in the legislature that some folks have already secured housing. And now we've we basically, with the passage of the last motion, I think we are anticipating that our session will not be the session that they had anticipated when they made those um, those reservations and uh, put down deposits, et cetera. So Mr. Chairman, with that, I would move that members of the 66th Wyoming legislature who have made housing arrangements for the upcoming 2021 general session in Cheyenne and who will lose re non-refundable deposits or pay cancellation fees may submit documentation, documentation of the amount of such lost funds to LSO by December 16, 2020, and that LSO will reimburse those legislators for these losses with CARES funds, if allowed, or if not, with funds appropriated to the legislature. Okay. That's um, Speaker-elect Bartles made the motion, seconded by Senator Anselmi Dalton. Okay, if we can go back to a full screen, are there any motions? Thank you, Anthony and Sarah, for running that screen so well. Are there any motions to this? Any amendments to the motion? Seeing none. No, Mr. Pre uh, Mr. Speaker. Go ahead, President. No, I'm not. I won't. I won't make an amendment on this, and I'm not sure where we're at. I didn't get a chance to check as many. We are going into this with. Uh, it's kind of open-ended, uh, but nonetheless, we should give some ground cover to our people uh, to make sure that they don't have uh, conflict with their the people they've rented from or will rent from. Correct, and that's the idea. Once this came to my attention that folks had done this, and there's about five or six members uh, uh, worked with Director Ulbrich, and, and uh, so I think, you know, obviously a citizen legislature and, and uh, you know, as everyone knows, and you know, folks who've done a long time, Chairman Bebout and others, uh, but we don't expect you to, you know, it's an unforeseen casualty of the COVID-19. So I think we can work for that. So appreciate that. Appreciate everybody's work. Uh, Senator Anselmi Dalton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just ask that um, people take care to look at their lease agreement or talk to them because it really is an act of God, uh, almost a force majeure sort of event. At our hotel, we've had to let things be canceled up to the day before and things like that. So just to try to save the money, um, obviously, I know that it's being cared, covered by the CARES Act or obviously by the LSL, and that's fine, but just take a minute to look at your lease and talk with your landlords for the people out there to uh, ensure that they can't use that to postpone it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, we'll go ahead and take a roll call on this as well. Ms. Cameron. Senator Anselmi Dalton. Aye. Senator Dockstatter. Aye. Senator Driscoll. Aye. Senator Gru. Aye. Senator Landon. Aye. Senator Rothfuss. Aye. Representative Barlow. Aye. Representative Connolly. Aye. Representative Freeman. Aye. Representative Greer. Aye. Representative Summers. Aye. Vice Chairman Perkins. Perkins, aye. Chairman Harshman. Aye. 13 ayes. Okay, very good. Are there any other motions in front of council today? Uh, Director Olbrich. Mr. Chairman, um, I just maybe talk about uh, uh, how we proceed forward now after the motions you've made today. What I'll do is I'll prepare a memo to all members um, recapping what you have, the two motions you passed today, what that means that members uh, should be prepared for budget hearings starting in, in December to be held in a virtual format with JAC members given the option to uh, meet here in the auditorium or another appropriate room. 
uh, where social distancing can be maintained, but there won't be members of the public, agency staff or LSO staff uh, allowed in that room, just JAC members. Um, also, Mr. Chairman, I will point out to uh, members that you, uh, the, the swearing in will be done uh, starting the week of January 4th in staggered sessions and to uh, be prepared to let LSO know what dates would work for those members to come down. And, um, and then Mr. Chairman, uh, discuss with new members, uh, newly elected members, the opportunity to be sworn in together, um, to have their uh, me members of their family attend, but that all members should be prepared to meet virtually starting January 12th to only conduct the essential business of the Wyoming legislature. The point being that don't make arrangements to come to Cheyenne. Um, we'll be anchored out of the seat of government here uh, with legislative leadership, but other members don't and uh, would not be encouraged to attend in Cheyenne. And that we then wrap up that session and, um, and then determine uh, what standing committees will work bills during that interim. Uh, Management Council, the 66 will meet to assign new interim topics to be considered. And then leadership will decide when to reconvene the session. And that will be the motion made during adjournment at the, in January as well. So I just wanted to recap for everybody so we're on the same page of where we're heading moving forward with that. Okay, very good, Senator Rothfuss. Thought I had to mute off. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> we don't have to clarify this now, but I, I think it's a, a question that we need to know a little bit more about. If, if we do end up with this approach where we refer uh, bills to committees, and obviously this has to uh, be resolved in the next session, but um, the counting of legislative days, I think, comes into effect if we're acting as a standing committee uh, and operating on bills. So if we if we take that approach, so I, I think the next time we we chat about it, it would be good for us to fully understand what the implications of of that are as we're contemplating how to operate moving forward. So just an open question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely, and I, and something we pondered certainly. Uh, okay, Representative Summers. Um, Mr. Chairman, just a note. I, I assume we're still going to do the. We have a, another agenda item. Is that correct? Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other items in on this agenda item number two? Okay, thank you all for your Just thought. really quick, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Yeah. Just confirming uh, from what Matt said and going to my notes, then we can move days if we want to, uh, right? I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Mr. Speaker, we can. I'm going back to my notes from Matt when he opened up that we can, we can move those days if we need to do that, right? So that we can do quality work at another time, maybe next year or something. But, but nonetheless, that's still an option in there. Uh, what days are that? The... Just uh, Senator Rothfuss, the minor, minority floor leader, is noting that we have to, we use up days. And right. Right. I'm confirming with Matt right now that that he brought that up in the beginning that. We have optional days that we can move out to another time. Correct. And I think, as I understood, Senator Roth was, if we assign bills as the, the next management council assigns bills of the 66, will though, if they meet, uh, to work those to those count as days. Not quite sure about that. I don't think they do, but I'm not the guy that's going to be the decision maker on it. But uh, we'll for sure dot that I and cross that T to make sure we don't burn any of our 40 days on those. That's, yeah. Did I, I'm looking for heads nodding in agreement. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's Senator Rothfuss. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. And I don't even know that it would be bad for us to burn days in that way. It's something to contemplate. We, If we do that, though, we have to be very thoughtful about efficiency on burning the days if we're if we're using those days as committee days as part of a session and then therefore they're going to count as committee days we would want to make sure we weren't just haphazardly uh running through them and that everybody was meeting or whatever the case was and, and that we thought through that 
uh, very effectively. Type of thing, yeah. Those kind of things, absolutely. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to move to the final. We have a request for additional meeting days. Item number three, uh, Director Ulbrich. Mr. Chairman, the uh, Select Committee on Capital Financing and Investments um, requests another meeting day to uh, consider additional items before uh, that group. You've got a, uh, a letter from the Vice Chairman of that Select Committee, Tom Walters. Um, so just need a vote from council uh, whether to approve that additional meeting day for uh, the cap fin select committee. Yeah, I'd entertain a motion, Senator Landon, seconded by Senator Guru. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. I'm gonna make sure I got everybody. I see one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Senator Perkins, are you still on the line? Yeah, Perkins, I. And that's twelve, so that's a unanimous vote. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other business uh, before the council today? Okay, members, we will have uh, one more meeting. Will be uh, uh, of the sixty-fifth management council, really to. There, there's an annual report we'll need to receive, uh, probably be a few bills uh, that the council will be asked to take up and work at that session. Uh, some of our sub uh, or select committees that cannot sponsor legislation. And then I think we generally have an executive session where we'll need to have uh, any staff updates, those kind of things by the director. And um, so, and anything else that might happen between now and then. Uh, I think my initial thoughts, thinking ahead, were December 21st. I'm now thinking maybe December 23rd. Uh, if recalibration gets moved back to 21st and 22nd, I can hear the jingle bells ringing, and uh, we're getting real close to Christmas. So, um, so we'll, but we'll be in contact as we get these schedules worked out. Uh, members, appreciate your leadership. It's been a pleasure serving. And uh, everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I know this 2020 has been crazy, but we've got a lot to be thankful for. And I think uh, uh, as we have that attitude of gratitude, um, you know, it uh, changes our perspective. And, uh, and uh, we really got a lot to be thankful for and, and uh, so thankful for President Perkins and your recovery and wish you uh, well and good health. And uh, that's a problem with a thing like this. It's not too real unless it really happens to you. And uh, then it's uh, very real. And uh, so we appreciate you. And, and again, a lot of empathy for all the people. There's not one person in our state or in our country has not been affected by this. Not one person, whether it was somebody who uh, had a funeral or somebody who was getting married or the birth of their child or college plans, career plans, all those things work goodness gracious so many folks have lost their jobs and uh, so a lot of empathy in our hearts and uh, as we enter this week of thanksgiving so with that members we are adjourned and uh, until the next time we'll see you next